It is finally here, my favorite moment in Attack on Titan, and this next handful of episodes is my favorite content in the series to date. And I'm sure there's going to be some manga readers being like, damn, anime onlys didn't get the catch cliffhanger, because in the manga, when Eren's head gets blown off, that's a month-long cliffhanger of what's going to happen next. But I think with the cliffhanger they decided to end it on, with Zeke seemingly in control, with Ymir, Ymir going with the person who has royal blood rather than Eren, who had the founder. It is, I think, a more effective cliffhanger for a weekly episode in comparison to a month-long chapter where you have to wait and speculate. And I think the idea of how they handled the past dimension with, you know, Eren just seeing all these different memories entering in as we see a chained-up Zeke, I think that was a much more effective direction for the anime where the manga had its own effective direction, but this one I think works perfect for the anime. I think the idea of what went down in this episode has so many emotions because it's a frantic try-to-get-to-Zeke moment, right? You know, we've been looking at these episodes, whether we've read the manga or anime original, and the emotion that you're supposed to have is you don't know what Eren is truly thinking. You might have your gut reaction, but you don't truly know, and you can't with 100% clarity say because so much has changed since the ocean scene. But there is a core fundamental to Aaron's character, and that is freedom. And that is, being born into this world is the most important thing that could ever be bestowed on them. And to want to completely remove that ability to allow his people to breed and have kids, it is something that definitely, over the months of reading, you think he's got to be trying to manipulate Zeke, right? Because ultimately, he should be in control. He just needs to come into contact with Zeke at the right moment. I mean, the, the begging scene from, you know, with Falco and his brother, please just let him get out of distance before you scream, kill all you want. Building up to all that to then having Gabby, after seeing such destruction before her eyes, blow off Aaron's head and the spinning effect. I wasn't expecting that because, I mean, it's exactly how I read it in the manga with certain images, but the idea of it like completely rotating like a baseball as it gets caught in Zeke's hand. I love that they included the flashback here as well because when basically Zeke's explaining the plan to Aaron, he pretty much is like, yeah, being born into this world is completely that I would never want that anymore. And you know something's awry right there. And the baseball scene is one of the best moments because when he throws it as a promise because they don't want to get into contact too soon. And the fact that Aaron misses it and says, oh, it must be from all the hospital work that's been done on me. That basically is him refusing to agree to it while putting up a facade. And given the fact that Zeke very much had suspicions, it very much was starting at that moment. And I think seeing him chained up and getting more clarification of what goes down when Ymir heals the body or creates titans. It's such an interesting visual detail because most authors, I think, struggle when it comes to like the mystical and the supernatural elements because when titan shifters lose a limb, they can regenerate. And the fact that we know Ymir and her curse and everything is connected to the titan shifters, the limited amount of years that they can live after becoming a shifter, all these moments, and the fact that it's just a little girl trapped and enslaved building things in the sand. The fact that it's just a visual representation of her power healing and creating things is so cool to me, and I think it's one of the coolest things I've seen an author do when creating something supernatural but giving it something that is grounded in reality that we can visualize despite not taking away from what's actually happening, which is the regeneration on the outside. As it's revealed in this episode, you know, time and eternity could pass in this realm, but it's instantaneous out there. So the fact that Zeke, you know, put up a guard there with the chains and everything, and Aaron at that point had no reason to, you know, think otherwise. Hell, I actually forgot that Zeke pulled that Uno reverse card there. And the fact that he's like, why in the hell would I go along with your plan as Zeke's begging like, no, we'll sterilize the people and then we'll release the rumbling. We can do that, but we just need to make sure that first and foremost that's done as Ymir's walking and she passes by and Eren gets chained up. That to me is such an effective cliffhanger because in that moment, everyone's gonna let out the same reaction. Of course, Eren would never go along with a plan to hurt his people. Eren would use Zeke to unlock the true potential of that ability and cause carnage to those who have hurt his friends and family. And then it all gets reversed like that. 
and it is such an effective cliffhanger. I really, really enjoyed what went down there and just seeing the difference in emotions from Zeke begging, being like, I'm using the same tactic they used against me. I play dead as Aaron's rushing and just everything from that. And the fact that that begging scene, like, please just let Falco get away as he's saying it's a damn shame, but, you know, war sucks. This has to be done as all the different people transform. I think there's some clever foreshadowing within this episode where Aaron very much is like telling Zeke not to do it. He's like reaching out in disbelief, like don't turn people into Titans because that's not what he wants. His entire plan was to use Zeke to get to what he wanted. So him not wanting Zeke to transform people he very much could be caring about because he doesn't know everyone who drank the fluid. I mean, it's a surprise sometimes with who actually turned out to drink it. He doesn't want to have the chance of someone else having consumed it accidentally. And the fact that everything builds up in that building block formation to just make you say, this is what Attack on Titan's all about. You can look at it from a distance, the past three episodes. Oh, they're fighting in the streets, you know, it's war, you know. We want to kill Aaron, Aaron wants to kill you. But there's all these layers and the building blocks take place to build this very complex puzzle. But when you go back and retrace your steps, you realize that it's actually been laid out in a very careful order. And it was so cool to see the numerous moments of just frantic buildup from the jaw coming in to then the jaw getting annihilated. Reiner holding him down. I mean, Reiner ready to give up his life because he's like, well, Zeke's dead. The power can't be used. I would much rather Falco take my place because being Reiner is suffering to then the shattering realization that, yeah, okay, he's still alive. And then the fact that when you see him just get out of his Titan and then Falco ends up consuming the Jaw Titan's ability instead, it's such a powerful moment. And just everything about it was just from the music choices to the presentation, my favorite presentation moment outside of the obvious, oh my god, I can't believe when they activated paths, like what was going on there, when they had that 3D shot where there was a 2D image, but then the 3D objects, and they were zooming in across everything, seeing where all the different characters are at, and just, it was such a well done scene to really showcase what went down in that quick of a moment. And just seeing all the different characters come in clutch, I mean, had Aaron not had his friends there, I mean, he would have died. There's more of an argument to be made that he would have lost there had they not had the backup of, like, the Thunder Spears and things like that. These are the kinds of moments that separate Attack on Titan from most anime and stories out there. And, I mean, whatever people feel about the series as a whole, moments like these, are, it's hard to argue, aren't anything short of extraordinary. And I am glad that even though they took away one cliffhanger for the anime crowd, they gave us a different cliffhanger that I think works even better because it's much different reading a chapter for 60 pages once a month versus watching 20 minutes of an anime episode. You gotta flow it differently. And I think the first three episodes of part two of the final season have been paced excellent and haven't been dragged out or extended past what they needed to. The rearranging of introducing flashbacks where they need to, it just... I think MAPPA is living up to what Wit set out, and it's great to see my favorite anime continue on a great path, but thoughts and feelings on whether you're a manga reader, anime only, what did you think, of course. Leave future spoilers out of the comments, please, and thank you. Let the anime only speculate, especially given how many toxic channels are out there putting the most obvious of spoilers in their thumbnails and titles. I want there to, at the very least, be a place on YouTube where people can discuss as freely as they want, so... Let me know your feelings down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.